Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome to today's Q&A with an actuary. We're going to go through so many things today. Um, okay, first things first though, let me know that you can hear me and see me. So right below this video, there's a chat button that you can let me know uh, that you can hear me and see me. And then when I get confirmation of that, okay, awesome. Drew, Carolyn can see me and can hear me, awesome. Okay, let me know in the chat where you're listening from and where you are on your actuarial journey. So if you've passed some exams, let me know that. If you have started looking for a job or maybe you've, you're already working in an actuarial position or an internship, uh, tell me that. I'd love to know, um, maybe you've started learning Excel and, and technical skills, or maybe you're just starting out and you're here to, to just find out more about the actuarial career and everything it has to offer. So if that's you, great. Let me know in the chat. So if you're just joining us, right down below the video, there's a button that says chat, and that's where you can chat with me and everyone else that's on today's call. Okay, let's see where you guys are at. So, oh, this is moving fast. Okay, Michael is about to write exam P, awesome. Michael, when are you planning to write? Has your exam been canceled? Um, uh, Michael's working in an actuarial business unit in research. Awesome. That sounds great. Um, okay, we have a student of actuarial science in the University of Lagos. Hopefully that I pronounced that right. Oh, Susan got her first interview request. That is so exciting. Is this for a, an internship or a full-time job? Susan, let me know. Awesome. Uh, Kate is from Phoenix, just starting out. Okay, awesome. You're going to learn so much today, I'm sure. Drew is from Dallas, Texas, in a data analyst position and just starting studying for exam P. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love that you have started working in a related actuarial position before you've even started studying for exams. We're going to talk about that today. I, I really recommend that if possible because it, it uh, gives you an upper hand when you actually start to go look for jobs. So great news on that, Drew, awesome. Carolyn is in Texas, past exam P, studying for FM, which you're going to take in June, looking for my first full-time job, but I can't get hired because of no experience. Okay, I'm sure there are ways that we can uh, take, take what experience you have and turn it so it is more relevant to the actuarial career. I've actually worked with lots and lots of people in a similar situation. But that is kind of why I do recommend trying to find a job, even or a related job, before you even start studying for your exam, so that by the time you have those two exams passed and, and you get some technical skills, you're ready with some experience, and that makes you a really good candidate for actuarial positions. Okay, Michael had the opportunity to work on an actuarial projects from time to time. Awesome. Ike is in Georgia, started learning Excel, having experience learning R and Python, and preparing for exam FM. Wow, you are doing a lot. That is great to see. Okay, Aaron is a high school student going to university this fall, taking actuarial science. Awesome. I went to the University of Waterloo for actuarial science, so I'm sure you will like that. Very cool. Um, Ian studying for exam FM. Awesome. Carolyn, oh, Carolyn, I know your name. You are in one of my programs, so writing for exam FM. Um, Mark is writing from Writing in London, Ontario. Oh, you're so close to me. I am in Canada, Ontario, um, in, right in Waterloo, actually. I just mentioned that, so we're very close. Um, just graduated from Western, which is a, a university here in Ontario, and starting to, and studying for FMNP this summer, and hopefully to find your first actuarial job in the fall. Awesome. I hope that goes well. Actually, the, this fall is when a lot of, a lot of employee employers will start looking for full-time positions to start the following year, um, like probably around this time next year. So that's when they, they usually do their hiring closer to the end of the, the pr prior year. So great. Hopefully you get those two passed and, and that'll put you in a really good position. 
Okay, Doug's from high school, in high school junior, interested in becoming an actuary. Awesome. Okay, there are so many comments here. I can't read them all, but I'm so glad that all of you are here. This is going to be so awesome. So today is really all about answering your questions that you have about the actuarial career. It can be anything related to studying for your exams, what steps you should take, uh, trying to get your first full-time job or internship, really anything that comes to mind that you need help with. I'm here to answer your questions. So if you have any questions already, feel free to put them in the Q&A section. That's where I'm going to take all the questions from today. So right below the video, you'll see there's a Q&A button right, right near the chat button. Um, and you can click that and that's where you should put your questions today so that they're all in order and I can keep up with them all. So it's gonna be kind of first come, first serve. So as the questions come in, I'll answer them. So make sure you get your questions in there early. Um, we'll probably be here for about an hour, hour 15 minutes maybe, and I'll just answer as many questions as I can. Okay, so while you are putting your questions in the Q&A box, just let me introduce myself a little bit because um, many of you probably don't even know me, maybe you've never heard of me. So I am Bria, I am an associate of the Society of Actuaries, and I am the owner of a, a website called Etched Actuarial where I help tons and tons of people pass their actuarial exams and get actuarial jobs. So that's, that's pretty much what I do full time now is just to help, help people, aspiring actuaries just like you, to succeed in the actuarial field. So I, like I said earlier, I started my journey going to the University of Waterloo for actuarial science. So I have lots of background in what it's like going to school if you have questions uh, around that. I've taken lots of actuarial exams, so I can help you with that, and, and have helped help thousands of people to prepare for their actuarial exams as well. I have experience in internships, um, both property insurance and casualty, ins or sorry, property insurance and life insurance, um, and, and those were internships. And then I also have life insurance experience, full-time work experience. So I actually work at a, a life insurance company here in Canada for about four years. And then I, I just decided to spend 100% of, of my time helping others because I know this journey to becoming an actuary is difficult. I saw that there are other people struggling with it and I had already achieved those things. So I know that um, I am just, that want to succeed in the actuarial career and I've just had so much experience with it myself and helping others. So I know I can uh, pass that knowledge and, and guide you and mentor you along the way too. So I do that all in what I call my Actuary Accelerator Program or Actuary Accelerator Community. Um, I kind of started just off, started off just helping people with their actuarial exams and helping them pass those exams. But now I've actually started this whole new actuarial community uh, just for aspiring actuaries that are in the kind of in the middle stages. They found out about the actuarial career, um, but they want some guidance and mentorship and help getting all the way from just starting out all the way to their first full time job. So that's what I do in the actuary accelerator community. Um, and today I'm going to be giving everyone here, if, if you're interested in joining that community, you can get your first month in it for just $1. There's so many resources in there. Um, we, it's just open, like about three weeks ago is when I started this whole community. And already we have almost 100 people in there. Uh, uh, everyone's working hard towards their actuarial careers. Some are studying for their exams. Some are already working actually in actuarial positions, but they just want the guidance and mentorship and, and just a community of other people. Uh, and some have not even started. They're still in high school and just want to learn about the career and have the guidance and support they need to, to be well prepared when it, time, it comes time to look for their first actuarial position. Okay, so um, I am going to just off, just from the start here, I'm going to put a link in the chat where you can go to check out the accelerator community and get your first month for a dollar because I am going to be referring to that a lot during today's call. Um, there are a lot of people on here that are in my program already or in the community already. Uh, oops, I put that in there twice, but hopefully you can figure that out. Uh, so coupon code to get your first month for a dollar is success. 
And yeah, since there are so many people here that are already in the community, I, I'm just going to actually sometimes share my screen, show where to go to get certain resources and things like that, because there are a bunch of courses in there too to help you. Okay, so let's get into these questions. There are already 30 questions. I'm not sure how we're going to get through these all, but we will try. So let's get started. Okay, and by the way, if you know answers to any any questions or have further input that you can provide to help someone else. This is this is a call with tons of other people. So feel free to help out and put other responses in the chat. I, I have lots of answers, but I don't necessarily have all the answers and everyone has different background knowledge and experience than I do. So, so certainly if you can add value to the questions put your your comments in the chat for other people to look into. Okay. So Michael says, how is the market for persons, for example, research and or social insurance who are in non-actuarial roles? Okay, so Michael, I'm assuming you mean like the actuarial market for, for someone that's in a research or, or some social insurance, some kind of related actuarial uh, position that's kind of related to an actuarial position. So how is that to... Is it, is it easy to move into a, an actuarial role when you're in a non-actuarial role? Hopefully that's what you mean by this question, Michael. And absolutely the answer is yes. And that's the way I, I recommend that you do that. Okay, good. Thank you for clarifying that, Michael, in the chat. So that's what I recommend you do. If you're interested in becoming an actuary, then you it, it's best if you actually start in, in jobs that are related to the actuarial career. So then you build up a lot of knowledge and expertise, and then you move and start applying into actuarial positions. Because a lot of people that I work with and, and that come into my programs and stuff like that, they, they have their actuarial exams passed and many of them have taken an Excel course or something, but a lot of them don't have any related experience. And that's what's really going to help put you just above, make, it's going to help make you a top candidate for actuarial positions. If you can have actuarial exams and technical skills and some related experience, it's going to be really, really good. So yes, if you are in a non-actuarial role, but you're in something related, then, then that's perfect because you're going to most likely be able to fairly easily make that switch over to an actuarial position, especially if you have those other uh, qualities that I talked about. And in, oh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the call, everyone on the call is going to get free access to my actuary accelerator plan. And it kind of goes through this whole thing, like what things you need and what order to take them all in. It, it's kind of like a 24 month plan. Um, and there's a video that, that goes through everything about that plan and how you should proceed with it. So in that video, there's, there's more information on that and how it works. Uh, so I definitely suggest you check that out. I will be giving it out at the very end of the call uh, to everyone that is here. Um, and that is also actually part of the Accelerator community. So you can join the Accelerator community, use that $1 uh, use that coupon code to get your first month for a dollar. And that course is in the community along with all the other resources that you need to um, work on each of, each of those kind of stages of, of uh, your, plan, your journey, I guess you could call it. Okay, great question, Michael. Uh, okay, next one is from Carolyn. What are typical job duties for an entry level actuarial analyst position? Okay, great question. So. They, as I'm sure you guys know, there are there are lots of different positions that an actuary could work in. So it, it's really hard to say exactly what the typical job duties would be. But one thing is for sure, you're you're most likely going to be using a lot of Excel and, and possibly VBA. So VBA is a, a programming language that you can use to automate tasks in Excel. And when I was working in entry level positions or, and my internships, I used Excel and VBA all the time. So, so I did a lot of reporting in using Excel and VBA um, in my entry level, my entry level full time position. I was actually responsible for calculating reserves and I'm not going to get into too much about what that is, but when an insurance company um, like 
an insurance company has a whole bunch of expected claims that it has to pay in the future. So my job was to determine how much money the company needed to save right now in order to pay all those claims that we expect to have to pay in the future. And that money that we save right now, it's kind of, it's sitting there, it's all invested in different things like bonds and, and stocks and things like that. But that's called a reserve. We're holding that money now so that we can invest it, but and have more money available, the money we need in the future to pay those claims off. So my job in the valuation role was to calculate reserves for, for our group insurance line. Uh, group insurance is something like you would have at work. For example, you might have benefits through your work uh, for dental care, maybe uh, some sort of health care benefits or something like that. So anything related to that was my responsibility um, to calculate the reserves for that kind of a product. So that's an evaluation position. There, there are multiple other types of positions you could have in an internship position that I worked at, which would be considered an entry level position too. Um, I, I was responsible for creating a whole bunch of what we call illustrations. So when uh, policyholder came to invest like invested a whole bunch of money with our company then we would have to give them uh like a projection of when they can expect their payment payments back each day or each month or something like that it's called an annuity and if you're studying for exam fm you you may have heard that term before or maybe even if you haven't but an annuity kind of pays pays a certain amount of money each uh month or each year or something like that so you can kind of create a whole timeline of when those payments are going to be made for the policyholder. Um, and my job was to create those illustrations for the policyholder that showed them exactly when they were going to get their payments. And that was all using Excel as well. So there, there are many different things you could do. Those were just a couple of examples, um, but most likely are going to be doing a lot of work in Excel. So in, in the Accelerator community, uh, I'll, I'll actually show you guys quickly here. If, um, okay. So, ah, okay. In the Accelerator community, there's a whole technical skills section right here. And there's a video, actually we just filmed this video we, two or three days ago. So there's a whole video on the technical skills for an actuary. I've got already a bunch of Excel lessons in here. So I, I learned how to use Excel through my work experience. So now I'm showing everyone in, in the community how to use Excel and kind of how it applies in a, a real life situation because we go through the process of creating a premium calculator in those lessons. And they're not all there yet because I haven't finished recording them all yet. Okay. Um, let's see. I have not used it like this before, so I have to figure out what I'm doing here. Uh, stop share. Okay. Next question is from Saran. Oh, and let me know. I'm sure many of you are here and you've worked in entry level actuarial positions too. If you have any insight and can explain what you did, put it in the chat for other people to read. That's the benefit of being on these calls. You get lots of different um, experience and knowledge. Okay. Sharon asks, does it matter to Canadian employers from where you have done your undergraduate in actuarial science? Okay, so I, I personally don't have a ton of experience with hire, like any experience with hiring. I was never in a management position where I was responsible for hiring people for actuarial positions. What I have worked with many people that have found actuarial jobs and are looking for actuarial jobs right now. So my, like employers don't really care where you get your degree, no. So if you take if you took an actuarial science course in the states or maybe somewhere else, it should be fine in the Canadian market. What employers really tend to care about are your actuarial exams. So you want to have at least probably 
you want to have at least one exam before you start applying to actuarial positions. But a lot, a lot of them are requiring one or two or three exams even before they'll consider you. So every employer is different in terms of the number of exams that they'll want you to have. Um, but that's a really good way to stand out is having a lot of actuarial exams done. Um, you also want to make sure you get your technical skills in line. You have experience using Excel and can prove that you know how to use it because Excel is used almost every day in the actuarial career. So that's going to be another thing that you want to focus your time on and getting related experience. And I really think for someone that maybe didn't take uh, act actuarial science in a Canadian school that this the related experience is what will make you uh, even like it will make it worth the employer's time to actually go and interview you and do all that stuff even uh, like I guess what I'm trying to say here is that there might be some hesitation from employers to hire someone that didn't take actuarial science in a Canadian school but I think if you really make yourself a top candidate in other positions that are in other ways, like I just mentioned, that you you still will be in a good position, even if you didn't take actuarial science at a Canadian school. So that's my thoughts on it. I, I personally haven't helped anyone get a job in Canada or the US that what that had their education overseas. So Primarily, I focus on, I, I just specialize kind of in people that have, that want to work in the US and Canada and have also like got their education and stuff in Canada or the US. Um, but that doesn't mean that everything I'm saying now doesn't necessarily apply to other areas. It just means that I'm not as confident in how like the actuarial environment works in other areas and things like that. So hopefully that sort of helps you, Sharon. Great question. Okay. Um, next is Kylie. How do you know if being an actuary is the right career path? Okay, really great question, Kylie. So one thing I really want you to do, especially if you're just getting into the career, is try to find someone else working in the actuarial career, even two people, and try just try to get a meeting with them. See if you can sit down, um, probably not right now, you can't sit down and have coffee with them, but maybe a phone interview or something. A lot of the time actuaries are willing to do that, especially if they're not like high level actuaries, but if they're just um, maybe entry level probably, or maybe a bit higher would be willing to do that. See if you can get on a call with them and just ask them questions about their day-to-day -day life. Um, ask them what inspired them to become an actuary or what they like about their career. Ask as many questions as you can so that you can get a good idea of whether the, the career overall sounds good to you. If you are someone that likes math and really likes business and pro solving problems and things like that, then most likely becoming an actuary is going to be a career that you like. That I, I loved it for those reasons. If, if you want to know my input is that if you like math and you like solving problems and you just like a challenge, then you're probably going to like being an actuary. You do really have to take into consideration though the amount of time it's going to take to study for your actuarial exams because they do take a long time to study for. It can take some people five years, but other people take 10 years to pass all the exams. Some people never pass them at all, all of them. So you have to, to really consider whether that's something you want to dedicate your time to, and you're willing to dedicate your time to, and that this career is something that you're going to go for, because you don't want to be spending all this time on it and kind of just, I don't know, not taking it very seriously. You, you have to decide that you're going to do it and then be willing to do what it takes to get there. Because I, I strongly believe that if you're re really willing to put in the work and, and study for those exams, do whatever it takes and invest in yourself and all that kind of stuff, I do believe that anyone that wants to can get an actuarial position, but you have to be someone with the mentality that um, says you're going to do something and you're going to do it no matter what um, and do whatever you have to to make it work. And if, if the career overall sounds like it, it's what you want in your, like it's 
it's something that would be up your alley and a good fit for you, then then certainly go 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 all in for it. But make sure you do talk to some other people just to get different ideas of what it's like. Um, I have some YouTube videos posted on my YouTube channel about uh, just day in the life kind of things. I, I talk a lot about actuarial exams and all that kind of stuff. So that might help you too. Okay, great question. And, and if you're wondering, my YouTube channel is Etched Actuarial. I'm just going to find it for you. Um, etched Actuarial YouTube. And I'm going to put that in the chat for you so you can go subscribe and watch some of those videos later if you're not already subscribed. Okay, I just put that in the chat. So there's the YouTube channel. You can go subscribe there and watch some videos later. That will probably help. Um, I also have tons of blog posts about this kind of stuff too. I'm sure I have ones about how to know if actuary is a good fit for you and stuff. And that would be at, I'll put that in the chat too. Um, but blog. Okay, there, and there's the blog. So YouTube and blog are in the chats now. Lots of information there. Okay. Balin says, I have no job experience. How do I get a job? Okay, Balin, you are definitely going to want to watch the accelerator course that I, I'm going to give everyone here or it's in the, the um, accelerator community as well. You can get your first month for a dollar right now uh, using coupon code success. Um, Again, I will put that in the chat because it is moving quickly. So I'll put where to get that in the chat. And it really, it comes down to you have to get, if you have no experience right now, it's, and you don't have any, you didn't mention how many actuarial exams you have and stuff like that. But if you're, you're someone that, even if you do have some actuarial exams, it, it may be difficult to jump right into an actuarial career if you don't have any related experience. So in the accelerator community, I do have a resume course that shows you how to kind of, it shows you what actuarial employers are looking for and how you can turn your past experience, no matter what it is, into really experience that is more related to the actuarial career. So that's one thing you definitely want to do on your resume is even though you may think you don't have any experience, well, it, it's likely that there are some skills that you used in your past jobs are, are relevant to the actuarial career. I actually helped someone very recently who was in a, an engineer and he was involved with working in ro with rockets and stuff. And he told me that he didn't have any like related actuarial experience or anything. So he was con concerned about whether he could get a job. He applied to lots and lots of positions, wasn't getting anything. But then we worked together. We turned around his resume. I, I picked out the parts of his past positions that actually were related to the actuarial career, which he didn't really realize at first, but they were highly related. So that's what we put onto his resume. And then when we did that, he started getting interest interest in like interviews and stuff like that. So he actually decided to start by going into an underwriting position. And once you get into an underwriting position, that's very relevant experience. So even if he just does that for six months to a year, he's going to have great experience to transition into an actuarial position. And most likely the, the company that he is doing that underwriting position with they'll most likely hire him into an actuarial position if they hire actuaries there. Not, not all companies have actuaries on, on site, so it depends, but that's most likely what will happen. So if you have no job experience that's completely related to the actuarial career, then your first step is probably going to be to try to find jobs that are more related to the actuarial career. And I know someone is going to be wondering what are those jobs? Uh, so if you get anything in data analysis, financial analysis, risk analysis, uh, actuarial assistant, underwriting, um, oh, there are just so many. So any, anything like that, anything finance related, 
anything in an insurance company is usually pretty good if you're learning how to how different insurance products work and things like that. Those are all great. Um, I, I list them all out in the accelerator community for you. So you should go get your first month for a dollar and check that out. Um, okay. Oh, you can't see the links that I sent in the chat. Oh, that is because I sent them to only no one. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry about that. For some reason, my, my chat was set to only go to people that are panelists and that would be like hosts. So there's no other host. So they basically just went to myself. Uh, send a chat to everyone. Can I do that? Oh yes, okay, there we go. Okay, so first link there in the chat now is to the Accelerator community where you can get your first. <laughs> awesome, that works, okay. Meow, my cat is laying on my lap right now. Okay, um, so yes, there is the link to the Accelerator community so you can get your first month um, for $1. And oh, and after that, it's $29 a month. I forgot to mention the after the $1 for your first month. So it's $29 per month. And right now we are getting together a whole bunch of founding members. So that means these are the people that are kind of getting in at the very beginning. They get a lower price forever. Like your price will never increase, but the price of the, the community is going to increase. It's going to be 40, or $59 in the future. Right now you can get in for 29 and your first month for a dollar. As well, you get to participate in all the live trainings that I do. So I'm actually creating a whole bunch of trainings for the community and you get to come in and listen to those live. So you can ask lots of questions relating to the specific topic that I'm teaching on. And that will just make those videos so much better for people that are watching the recordings in the future because they're going to answer tons and tons of questions that other people have that I may have missed. Uh, and yeah, well, there's a WhatsApp group in there where the whole community is just talking, helping each other, all that kind of stuff. Lots of resources. Go check it out. <laughs> um, and I will put a link to my blog and my YouTube channel as well. Okay, there's two links there that I just put in. One is to YouTube and one is to my blog. And on the blog, you can also subscribe to get um, study tips too. I send out tons and tons of study tips to help you with exam P and FM. And Aaron asked, do I do basic Excel training? Yeah, in the, in the accelerated community, there are a whole bunch of Excel courses in there right now. So you can go check those out. You, during your one, your first month for a dollar, you can get access to all of those. Okay, great question so far. Awesome, okay, so. So Michael asks, how is the business structured? Are there more than one path for different skill sets, uh, such as pensions, data mo modeling, accounting rules for pensions? Okay, to cater, to cater for ASAs and FSAs with different histories and strengths. Okay, Michael, great question. Yeah, so. In my experience, there are different departments for that actuaries can work in. So in my particular uh, cases, so we had a life insurance department and they'd be involved with doing all the pricing and valuation, which is calculating those reserves that I talked about. They'd be responsible for doing all the pricing and everything related to our life insurance business. There was another department that was involved in doing all the group insurance. So me, I was involved in the valuation for group insurance, but there was also a pricing team that had actuaries on it and they did all the group insurance. So each company, depending on the different products they offer, will probably have different departments that handle the, the pricing and the valuation of each of those different products. And um, so are there more than one path for different skill sets? So. Yeah, some positions are going to be more focused around data modeling and some might be, I, I don't know, there, there are tons of different positions and they can focus more on your skill sets for sure. Um, so great question. And yeah, you could, you could have accounting or you could have 
uh, actuaries in the investments department. So if you're really interested in investing and that kind of stuff, but you also want to apply that to an actuarial, like you want to apply actuarial work to an investment standpoint, you could kind of potentially get a position involving both of those. There are lots of different areas within the company where actuaries can work. So if there's one type of position that you're more interested in, first, I would always recommend your, you go after and get any position that you can to start with. But once you get some experience, it's usually much easier to um, get the, the positions that you want. So uh, start with any experience that you can get and then just um, move into a position that more, more aligns with what you really want to do. As you uh, get higher and higher in the actuarial exams, you actually have to specialize in the type of actuary that you want to be. So there are exam like, I don't know, there's, there's group, group actuaries. So those, the, the actuaries that want to specialize in group insurance, they'll take different exams. There are, there's a life insurance track. So if you're interested in life insurance, you'll take the life insurance track. There's like a risk management track. So if that's what you want to specialize in, you can. And you'll take different exams depending on which track you want to pursue. So there's also that. Okay, great question, Michael. Okay. Um, next. Okay. Um, I'm going to try, there's a, there's a few questions here that are from the same person. So I'm going to try to get to uh, some people that have asked just one, or haven't asked, asked a question yet. And then I'll come back if we have time to the second questions that people have asked. Okay. Ruben asks, what kind of job should I get before I go into actuarial work? So I did talk about this already and it looks like your question was posted before I even talked about that. So anything in underwriting is great experience to get into an actuarial position. Like most of the time insurance jobs, like anything in insurance where you're learning how the different insurance products works and things like that would be great. Like I've actually worked with quite a, quite a few people that were claims adjusters or insurance agents and stuff. Those are great positions to, uh, kind of learn how insurance works and that makes you valuable for an actuarial position. Anything in data analysis, risk analysis, financial analysis, those jobs tend to be good. Um, actuarial assistant, I've had someone recently get an actuarial assistant job, which is awesome. So those will be great to help get your, get your experience you need so that you're a really good and top candidate for actuarial positions. Great question. Um, okay, Aaron says, are there any courses I can take in the first year that would help me towards VEE credits? Okay, so in order to become an actuary, there are certain, there are VEE credits that you have to get, VEE credits. Uh, there are three of them, and, and basically they cover uh, different topics, three different topics. So you can actually take a course and a, an exam to get those credits, but there's also the option to take courses in school that will help you, um, that will help you get credit for those VE credits. So if you get a high enough grade in the courses, then you can get credit for the VEE credits. So Erin, you'll have to check on the Society of Actuaries website and look at the, Every school has different courses that will be eligible for these VEE credits. So you'll have to see if your particular school has any courses that will allow you to get credit for those. And if you decide to become a, a, a member of the Accelerator community, I can certainly help you with that further, get you the exact website where you can go look for all that and, and help you figure out exactly which courses would help you get those VEE credits. Um, but that's something we can talk about more in the WhatsApp group. Uh, but in general, yeah, you can go to the website, the SOA website, and then find where it talks about the different courses that you need, and then take those courses. Okay. Okay, Charles asks, what are your expectations for the job market for entry levels during this pandemic time? Okay. 
So uh, overall, I've just seen that there's not as much hiring going on, but I, I've still seen people getting jobs. Like even with all this going on, I just worked with someone yesterday that got, or not yesterday, I've worked with someone this week that actually got their first actuarial position right now during this time. And, and there's been a few others too. So at, actuarial employers are still hiring. Um, so you should certainly be putting out your resume and, and applying, even though we're in kind of a weird time right now. So, and during the interview process, it's most likely going to be a bit different than usual. You probably, you won't go into the company. It'll just be uh, kind of something like this where you can, well, you'll be able to talk back to the, the person as well. So it won't be exactly like this, uh, but really it'll be a video conference interview most likely. Or, or potentially just a phone call, but I, I would guess it would be a video conference. So there will be a little bit of changes like that around the, the interview process. And, and there's going to be a bit less hiring, but I think a lot of people right now have kind of put off applying to jobs and things like that. So potentially right now there's less competition. So that means easier for you to get in and get noticed. So be applying right now and don't let this stop you from taking action and moving ahead with your dreams, okay? So great question. Okay, next up is Maggie. And she says, I'm new to the idea of the actuarial career path, but planning on taking FM this summer. What programming skills do I need to learn to be prepared for this job? Okay, great question. So it sounds like you're preparing for exam FM this summer. That's awesome. You don't need to know any technical skills to pass exam FM, but in order to be an actuary, you're, you're really going to want to focus your time on learning Excel and VBA. Like I said, I used those almost every single day when I was working in actuarial positions. And if you missed it earlier, VBA is just a programming language that allows you to automate tasks in Excel. So that can be really useful because when you're using Excel all the time, you don't want to have to be manually doing things um, you might have to calculate something a thousand times or something like that for, for a thousand different policyholders, and you don't want to have to do that manually. You can just set up a quick code that will run through everything in about five seconds rather than you spending an hour doing the same thing. So those are the two skills I highly recommend in terms of your technical skills that you learn. Now, every company is going to use different programs, but but Excel and VBA are the consistent. You can be almost guaranteed that your position will require Excel and VBA. So that's why I, I tell everyone in the accelerator community to focus on those two things. And then you can typically apply the knowledge that you've learned and the skill set that you've learned from Excel and VBA and you can apply that to other programs that your specific position might need. So some companies use Python or SAS or uh, SQL. There, there's just so many different things. I used a program all the time for modeling called GGY Axis, but you can't even learn that by yourself. You have it, the license is probably tens of thousands of dollars or at least thousands of dollars just to get one license. Um, so you're not going to buy that just to learn it. And there's really not many resources online in order to learn it. So focus on the two thing, those two things, Excel and VBA. And then that's going to allow you to have a, a pretty good um, technical background in order to get actuarial positions. And you might have to learn some other stuff when you, when you go work in your, real, in your first entry level job, but that's okay because those two are most likely going to be part of it. And then you can e fairly easily learn the other skills that you need. Great question. I do have Excel courses in the Accelerator community. I will post how you can get your um, your one your first month for one dollar. Uh, I'll put that in the chat again. So, so the Accelerator community is helping anyone from the very beginning stages all the way to getting your first full-time job. The goal is to get it in 24 months. So I lay out a whole plan of exactly how to do that. And then I give you all the little resources that you need to make that happen. 
So you, as an actuary, you have to pass exams. Well, I have a whole course about the study strategy that goes into passing exams. I have study strategy or study material reviews in there for you. A whole bunch of free exam P and FM resources are listed. If you're on the stage where you're starting to look for your first full-time job or an internship, there's a resume course in there. Uh, I still have to create all the, the resume information and interviewing information and all that kind of stuff, but you can get in now and actually participate in those, those trainings with me. Uh, and there's all the technical stuff too. So there's VBA, the VBA lessons are going to be posted, but there's already Excel lessons in there too. And I'll show you guys more about that um, in about 20 minutes or so. Um, okay. Oh, and, and the success, sorry, the success coupon code is only good for this call. So you'll have to use that during this call. And after the call's over, it won't be good anymore. Okay. Next. Okay, I am planning to start preparing for exam P or FM. My question is, do I have to get the first, first the membership with the SOA? If yes, what are the charges for students? Okay, so no, you do not have to have a membership with the Society of Actuaries in order to take exam P or FM. So all you have to do is study, you study for your exam. There's a study strategy course in the accelerator community. Um, study for it. And then you'll, you'll sign up on the Society of Actuary website, Society of Actuaries website for exam P or FM, whichever one you take first. You'll just sign up for the exam, register for it. Um, once you register, the, the fee to, to take an actuarial exam, the, the beginning one, so exam P and FM are the first two exams that most people take, those cost $250 to take. So you'll pay the Society of Actuaries the exam fee, and then they will give you an email telling you how to actually go and select your date and time to take your exam. And exam P and FM are only are offered on alternating months. So you can only take exam P in like January, March, May, et cetera. And FM is offered on the, the alternating months in between there. So great question. No, you do not need an SOA membership to take exams. Great question. Um, Okay, next here is from Baby Fox. <laughs> so Baby Fox says, I've taken exam P and FM four years ago, and I'm now studying for IFM. I've been out of the job market for three years to be an artist. Given the current state of the job market, what do I get back starting? How do I get back starting a career? Will anyone want to hire me with a gap in my resume? Okay, so you've taken exam P and FM four years ago. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that you're studying for exam IFM. That's also great. Uh, so I'm not, you said you've been out of the job market for three years. I'm assuming that you don't mean that you were, you were previously working in an actuarial position. If you were currently, if you were previously working in an actuarial position, then I don't think it will be too hard to get back in to to an actuarial position, you'll, you'll have to explain the reason why you took uh, a time away from work and stuff and employers are understanding they'll, it, you have an explanation and they'll be okay with that. Um, most of them anyway. So start applying for actuarial positions as well if that was your situation. If you weren't working in an actuarial position beforehand, I certainly recommend that you start still apply for actuarial positions, but you also might want to start looking for related positions like I talked about earlier, especially if you don't already have some related experience. If you do have related experience, then you're, you're probably going to be in a fairly good position still to get an actuarial job. Um, passing that one other exam though, exam IFM, will really help to show that you're again committed to the actuarial career and that you're serious about it. So um, I, I wouldn't wait to start applying until you've passed IFM, but I do think that potentially employers will, uh, that, that not having any exams for four years might be a red flag for some employers. So passing IFM might, uh, might help your situation. 
after that. Okay, so great question, baby fox. Okay, next is from Keely. I'm going to take a quick drink first. Okay. I got a summer internship at a life insurance company. Awesome, Keely, that is great news. As of now, they plan to start remotely. Any idea what I might expect while working remotely? What does the field look like right now without physically being in an office? Okay, so there are actually quite a few people on my team that are in actuarial positions, but they, they're now finding that they have to work remotely too. So there's a lot of video conferencing just like this. Um, and, and I was talking about this on another call kind of recently, actually. We have Q&A calls like this in the accelerator community, specifically only for members of the community. So I was talking about how it's, it's going to be a little difficult. I, I really can't even imagine having to start your whole actuarial journey in like not being in an office and not being able to talk to people and get help and, and just like ask quick questions and stuff like that. I think it's going to be difficult from that standpoint. And, and that's really why I do think that having the, the accelerator community is a benefit because you don't have to worry about an, an potentially annoying people that you work with, with a whole bunch of questions. You can come to the community and ask us instead. But I do think that that's going to be something that you have to pay attention to. And so when you're going to, when you have questions and stuff, you'll want to make sure that you build up several questions at the same time so that you're not always going and, and asking one-off questions. Um, you'll want to try to be independent, but, but at the same time, you'll want to, to get as much communication going with your teammates and stuff. It's, it's going to be hard to get to know people. So the more you can do conference calls like this and, and make sure that you try to incorporate that, not just emailing back and forth, try to incorporate conference calls so that you can actually see people face to face, get to know them a bit and stuff. And that's going to help too. So um, honestly, I'm not 100% sure how it will work when you're just starting a new job. I imagine that there will be a lot of things like this where they're sharing your screen, they can share their screen with you and show you what to do in certain workbooks and stuff like that in Excel and it'll be a lot like that. But I do think you're, it's going to be a little tougher than it is for people that actually get to go in the office for their first, at least a few months. If you get to go in for a few months and you kind of learn the ropes, learn what's going on and get to know your, your coworkers and things like that, it'll make it, it would, it would be more, much better, but unfortunately that can't happen right now. So great question. Okay. Next question is from Agile. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Okay, I have been checking the IFOA platform. So IFOA is kind of like the Society of Actuaries, but for India, I believe. So I'm, I'm not very familiar with that platform at all, but I'll try to answer your question. So I've been trying to check the IFOA platform to become a student member. However, for multinationals <coughs> attached to them, they want a 2.1 for internship and full-time employment. Does this spell doom for others without a 2.1? I'm on 2.2 currently. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like you're wondering about um, your, your GPA and if the IFOA will care about that in terms of becoming a member. And honestly, sorry, I cannot help you. I have no idea what they even look for. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to do that for the Society of Actuaries. So unfortunately, I cannot answer your question, but I do recommend you try posting on Reddit. If you go to the Actuary Reddit subforum, there's probably people on there that will be more familiar with the IFOA and be able to help you there. So sorry, I can't answer that one. Okay, Jeffrey says, I've completed the first exam and set unsuccessfully, 
for the second, but then left the actuarial field. What is the best way to get back into the field? Okay, so you have one exam. That's a great start. Um, so you, you, you'd be great just joining the accelerator community now and going through that 24 month plan. But really, I suggest you start by looking for those related positions, because once you start with the related positions, then uh, you'll, you'll hopefully get a job and you'll be working and getting some experience. Then you can move on to starting to study for your second exam, F, exam FM, and you'll be working while you're studying for your exam. And then once you've passed exam FM, you could go back and start looking for actuarial positions because by then you'll have some related experience and you'll have an exam. Hopefully you'll have some technical skills too. Um, and, and you could, you could potentially get an actuarial position. Um, if, if that doesn't work, then, then you might want to, so while you're looking for that actuarial position, I would recommend that you also work on learning your Excel, your technical skills so that like if you don't already have them. So then by the time you pass your third exam, you're going to have lots of experience. You're going to have exam P, FM, and IFM. Then you're going to have some technical skills. And I think that would make you a really good candidate for the actuarial field, um, even though you left it for a while. So that, that's totally fine. It happens. Um, but whatever you can do to make yourself, a, like just keep working towards becoming a top candidate. And that's what, that's what the accelerator community is all about, is just to keep progressing yourself towards being a top candidate. And eventually you will get that job. So keep going. It sounds like you're doing the right thing so far. Okay. Okay. Alina says, what are some tricks to keep you motivated to study every single day, especially during quarantine? Okay. I am going to tell you about my study strategy program. Um, so the study strategy program is what I mentioned at the very beginning of this call where I've helped thousands of people in preparing for the actuarial exams. And the number one thing that make, gets people through is having accountability. So in the study strategy program, my team and I actually go into the schedule that we create for you and we, we make sure that you're on track. Twice per week, we do accountability check-ins. And that really helps members of the, the study strategy program to stay on track and keep studying and stay motivated and stay consistent with their studying every single day because that's really, really important when, when you're studying for actuarial exams. Cramming is not really an option. So, adding accountability into your studying somehow is really going to help. It could be, you of course could join the study strategy program. You can find that on my website if you're interested or um, you can become a, a member of the accelerator community and you actually get a, a discount on it. Um, but sorry, hopefully that doesn't confuse. Accelerator community is kind of for uh, your whole, whole whole journey from going from very beginning to getting a job. And the study strategy program is specifically for helping you pass your exams. It's very hands-on. You're working with me and my team. I create a whole study schedule for you and stuff like that and do the accountability check-ins. So they're two different things. Um, so yeah, accountability doesn't necessarily have to be in the program. Maybe you can find a friend or something that's also studying for the exam. Um, or join the accelerator community and there are lots of people that are studying for an exam too so you could find one that way. Um, another thing that always keeps me motivated to do things is actually just to watch uh, just watch actuarial content so like when I when I had fit certain fitness goals and stuff. I was often going to YouTube. I was inspired and motivated by the people that were there doing their workouts and sharing tips and stuff like that. So, and a lot of people tell me that they come to my actuarial YouTube channel and they just watch the videos because it keeps them motivated, it keeps them inspired. There are lots of other people in, in the comments writing their exam too, so that helps. Um, just anything you can do to connect with other people that are going through the same process, doing the same things as you, can be really beneficial. And again, you can get into the, the accelerated community for $1 and we have over a hundred, like almost 100 people right now that are going through this whole process. And by the end of this call, I'm sure there will be over a hundred because 
it's such a valuable thing to have just a community of people that you can go to, you can bounce ideas off of, get ideas from, um, study with, and all those kind of things. So do whatever you can to connect with others, and that will really help to motivate you. Okay. It is coming up on nine o'clock. So I am going to show you guys in the accelerator community a little bit and then i'm going to give out the accelerator course that i said i would give everyone um, and then i will take a few more questions there are still there are 50 49 questions so i don't think i'll get to all of those today um, but like i said we do have calls like this in the accelerator community just for people in the community so they're much smaller you have a much higher chance of getting your questions answered um, so I will still come back and answer some more questions um, for sure, but yeah, uh, we, and we do those calls twice per week. Um, okay. Now I'm going to put in the chat right now where you can go to get your first month in the Accelerator community for $1. And then I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, so this is the link that I just showed you all about the Accelerator community. It goes in brief, like not too briefly, it's pretty detailed actually about everything you're going to get. Um, so, so really this is my program because I, I saw that people could pass their exams. I've helped tons and tons of people pass their actuarial exams, but they still have trouble getting a job. and. I know the reason for that is because th they just need all the support from very beginning to end. And I, when I was just helping with actuarial exams, I would of course help as much as I could um, help those people that I was working with. I would guide them and stuff and give them advice, but I just know that so many more people need this. They need just guidance and mentorship and support on exactly what they should be doing to make themselves a top candidate for actuarial positions. So that's why I created the Accelerator community. In the community, you get a, an Accelerator plan, which you're getting, you will get this and the course that goes with it for free no matter what today, but it is also part of the community. And it, the 24, 24 months, exactly what you should do uh, each and every month from, from wherever you're starting at right now, all the way to getting your first full-time job. So I talk about how to get all that experience and your technical skills and all that kind of stuff. We have lots of courses, which I'm going to show you in there, and we're still creating more. Courses are related to your technical skills, study strategy, we have lots on that, um, and, and the resume course on exactly how to create a resume that stands out in the actuarial career or field. And there's a, a WhatsApp group, a community of everyone that's in the, the community, all helping each other, they talk, they they're motivate each other, and it, it's really awesome. So, um, and of course, there's a bit more about me, but I already told you about that. And so you can just click here to get started. And then once you join the Accelerator community, you, you basically, you're going to get your first month for a dollar. Like I said, it's only $1 for, for your first month and then $29 per month after and you can quit whenever you want. So you can come join the community now uh, on, your, on day 27, like it says right here. I'm going to remind you that your membership is going to renew. If you don't wanna remain a member, you can tell me to cancel your membership, I'll cancel it, and then you won't have any other payments. Or if you want to continue in the community, keep collaborating with everyone, keep getting access to all the courses and everything, and to, to have me as mentorship, uh, for your actuarial career, then you can stay in and remain a member. Um, so then you can just go here to join the community. And if my computer loads it, being slow right now, right here is where you can use your success coupon code. So you just put success in there and press apply and then it will tell you that the membership is one dollar now and then 29 per month after okay so once you become a member i want to show you what it's like inside 
Um, oh, don't go away. Uh, that's not the page. That's not the page. This is the page. Okay. So you're going to start in, you'll get access to the 24 month accelerator plan. There's a video for you to watch, and this is what you're getting, you'll get for free. You'll get this video that outlines exactly what you should do. But then there are steps like getting your first job. There are steps like learning your technical skills. There's stuff like passing actuarial exams. You have to do all that in order to be a good candidate. So that's where everything else in here comes into play. So under the exam resources, you get access. Oh, that's not what I meant to you get access to this whole course that goes in depth on the exact study strategy that I've used to help hundreds of people on their journey to passing their first actuarial exam. Um, I've got lots of resources in here for you to use and create your own study strategy. Um, then there's also my recommended study materials in here for exam P and FM. I've created a whole video so you can actually see study material options and see what they're like. Um, and then same for exam FM. And my recommendations for IFM are down here if anyone's planning on taking that one soon, but there's not a video for that yet. Um, I got information about my, my, the best calculators for actuarial exams, lots of ex free resources. There's also a math Q&A forum. So if you're studying for your exam and need help with some of those questions, like sometimes the the solutions to question to the practice questions they just make no sense at all so um in here people are asking questions all the time about from all different sources it doesn't matter where you get your questions from we can help you in the forum area and there are already four that almost five thousand posts in here so maybe your questions are already answered um and then we have a whole bunch of job resources. So this course about how to create your resume, I haven't actually recorded that one yet. That's something that founding members will get to participate in when I record it. Um, but there is a, a resume course here already created, all written out for you that explains how to create a really good resume. Uh, whether you're looking for an internship or your first full-time job, you'll get all the help you need in that resume course. And then you can ask any questions you have in the WhatsApp group. So I'm there, I'm always there helping people figure out like job questions or studying questions, anything like that. We can help in the WhatsApp group. And there's also technical skills. So we just recorded this video on technical skills for actuaries like I talked about, and there are Excel lessons in here. And the best part is really that this, this community is created for people like you, aspiring actuaries that want to succeed in the actuarial field. So I'm going to, I'm still adding to this. I'm going to be adding what you guys need. If you need different resources on different topics, I'm going to add those in. Um, and, and I forgot to mention, we've already had tons of Q&A calls exactly like this. So you can go and watch the replays of all them here. And we do those, there are more I still have to add. Um, you can you can participate in these calls twice per month. Smaller, so you'll definitely get your question answered. We keep going until all questions are answered on those calls. Um, so you'll you you basically have access to me to get your questions answered in the WhatsApp group. But then we have these Q and A calls where you can go a lot more in depth and, and tell me more personal details and stuff, so that I can really help you figure out what your next step is and all that kind of stuff. And there are also, lastly, a bunch of just short videos answering specific questions that I get all the time, like, are you smart enough to be an actuary? Um, where can I learn calculus for actuarial exams? Uh, can I be an actuary with my degree? So I've already created a bunch of bite-sized videos like that, and I plan to add tons and tons more in here, depending on the questions that you guys have. So. This, this community is built for you. It's going to help you with whatever you need. I'm also planning to add in a vocabulary video that talks about different actuarial terms and what they mean. So that'll be beneficial for when you go into an actuarial position. You'll know what everyone's talking about and things like that. So whatever you need to succeed in your actuarial journey will be in here. Um, there's already lots available. Uh, and, and really this is, 
it is to help you it just accelerate your success in the actuarial field. So that's what the accelerator community is all about. I've put a link in the chat to where you can go to get your first month. And, and that'll just lead you to that page I showed you earlier. It'll lead you here, but then yeah, yeah, you just click on the get started now. And then you go down here to join the community. And then right here is where you can put that success coupon code so you can get your first month for $1. Okay, so that is all inside the Accelerator community. I'd love to have you join. And if you have any questions at all about it, please feel free to ask those. I will try to get to them. Um, and the coupon code success is only going to be good till the end of this call. So I'm going to go for about another 15 minutes answering questions and then that coupon code won't work anymore. So make sure to use it now if you're interested. You can always cancel your membership anytime. Um, and yeah, and you can join a community of other people doing this and just have someone like, I know, I know when I was studying for these exams, or sorry, when I was studying for the exams, but also just becoming an actuary in general, I really didn't have anyone to guide me in the right direction. I didn't have someone to ask questions to. And I just, I know my journey would have been so much shorter if someone could have guided me in the right direction, told me how to do things and just, yeah, it would have just changed my career projection for sure. It took me a lot longer to become an actuary than it needed to. I failed exams several times. Um, and yeah, so I'm using all the knowledge that I gained and have used to help so many other people to help you succeed faster in the accelerator community. So that's what it's all about. Let me switch back to me now. Okay, so let's go through a few more questions if you have anything related to the accelerator community i'd be happy to answer those questions if you join please let us know in the chat that would be awesome i i've done probably about pretty much everyone that has joined the accelerator community has just been on a call like this and really loved just having someone there to answer their questions and all that kind of stuff so i know that I know that this is a valuable thing just to have a mentor and stuff. So if you join, please let us know in the chat. I'm so excited to have you. Oh, yay, Mark. Mark joined. Make it, uh, what was that? I can't, it says Mika, I think, joined. John joined, Ian joined. Awesome, I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to working with you and helping you all on your journey. Okay, let's look at a few more questions here. Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot. I am going to give you guys that course as well. I will do that now because I know it's it's over an hour now, so some of you might have to leave. Baby Fox is joining, yay. <laughs> Sifarna is joining, awesome, I am so excited. Okay, um, where can you go to get that course? It is right here. So, and I'm sorry, I'm just gonna share my screen to make sure you guys see how to do this again. Um, right here. Okay, so I'm going to send you this link in the chat in a few minutes. So if you've already joined the Accelerator community, you don't need to do this. Actually, just don't get this. You already have access to this course in the Accelerator community, but if you, don't want to join the community and just want the course, then you can go to this page, which I will put in the chat after I'm done showing you this. So basically you can get your the free option here. You get your can go down here to get the course only. And I wanted to really compare it for you guys. So you're, you're basically getting one course for free or you can get this the exact same plan. You can get all these courses, all the access to me, you get access to the Q&A forum or the Q&A calls like this. You get access to the WhatsApp group. You save 50% on future pricing. So like I said, it's 29 per month right now and, and $1 for your first month. 
but then you get that price locked in forever. This is going to be a, a big community eventually. Lots of people are going to join it and prices are going to increase to $59 per month. So founding members, like anyone joining right now is a founding member because you're getting in before everything is even created yet. And that what, that's what makes you a founding member and you get your price locked in at $29 forever. And as always, you can, there's no risk, you can cancel any time. So really, I wanted to compare these two for you and just show you that for $1, you're getting so much more, but you can just go ahead and get the course for free right here. Okay, so I will send you a link to that page for anyone that wants to do that. There, I put that in the chat. Okay. And, oh, and Shay says, joining, awesome, I'm so excited. Um, oops, I messed something up. Oh, panel, okay, there we go, sorry. Okay, um, Drew, do you have to get in before this call ends? Yeah, so you don't have to join before the call ends, but the coupon code success will be done by the, when this call ends, okay? So you won't be able to get your first month for the dollar using the success coupon code anymore. And, and we're having our next community call next week. So you'll, if, you're, if you didn't get your question answered today, you can join the call next week that we're going to have just for accelerator members. And then you'll definitely get your, your question answered. It's, it's a much smaller call. Okay, answering questions now. Um, Abby, Abby says, why did you decide to become an actuary? What are some classes you took in college that you really enjoyed and things that influenced you to start this career path? Okay, really great question. So I actually found out about the actuarial career when I was still in high school, which is actually pretty lucky. A lot of people don't find out about it that early, but I was taking a, one of those courses on, or one of those quizzes online and I, I think it was a careers, a careers course or something like that. I took a career quiz and it asked me a whole bunch of questions and the number one thing it said for my career options were uh, an actuary. And I had no idea what an actuary was at that time. So I started looking into it, did some research and I was like, wow, that sounds pretty awesome actually. So it had lots of math, which I knew I wanted in my career. It was challenging, which I, I love a challenge. Um, that challenges keep me motivated. If you're someone that stays motivated by challenge and always wants to try to overcome challenges and stuff like that, you're really gonna like the actuarial career for that reason, I'm sure. But that's something that drew me to it. Uh, the salary was something that I really liked. Like I, I wanted to have a good job that would pay, pay a good amount and stuff. So I liked that. It was also the job security. Like when, once you're in an actuarial career, you, you pretty much have a, like your career set, you can get jobs. So um, I, I like that about it. Um, really, really everything about it I liked. I liked, I, was, I got really interested in how, um, how they actually figure out insurance premiums and all that kind of stuff. I never really thought of it before, but once I heard of the actuarial career, I kind of started thinking about like all the statistics and the math and stuff that goes on behind insurance and how that all works. And it really intrigued me. So that, that's what, why I became an actuary. And those are the parts of the job that I really loved. Like I love the challenge. I, I loved coding. So um, VBA is something like I told you that we used on the job, but I loved coding. So I used that quite often. Um, and those are, yeah, those are kind of the things that influenced me to start in the actuarial career. So great question, Abby, thanks for asking. Uh, oh, and what are some classes that I took in college? So like I said, I majored in actuarial science. So I had a lot of statistics courses, a lot of like probability courses. Um, I took some economics. I, we had specific actuarial science courses that would teach me some of the material that was tested on the exams. So I had a lot of those kind of courses as well. Um, finance courses, uh, lots of things like that. I, I also took some law related courses and stuff too. 
Um, but I also made sure to kind of balance things out. A lot of my coursework was math and, and constantly thinking all the time. I made sure to include some courses that were just for pretty much pure enjoyment um, and stuff that I was interested in in other areas of like other than math and business and all that kind of stuff. Um, not only because I enjoyed them, but because it made um, my course load much easier. <laughs> it, it was a lot of work getting through school. I was studying a lot. Um, and, and basically my whole life was revolved around school and eating and soccer. <laughs> so that's what I did through, so uh, through school. Didn't get much sleep. Okay. Um, okay, Ian's question here is, I'm currently studying math. Ooh, Devonier joined. Awesome. So excited. Um, so Ian said, I'm currently studying math at UBC and there is not an actuarial science program there. So I'm just wondering how many exams should I pass before graduation in order to be a, as competitive as other people with an actuarial major? Okay, there's another question, but I'm gonna answer that one first. Great question. So a lot of people actually graduate from school with at least one or two exams passed. But there's also a lot of people that don't even know while they're in school that they want to be an actuary. So lots of people end up graduating without any exams passed. I don't necessarily think that uh, you're going to be extremely better off if you pass some exams in school. However, it will help you uh, probably get a job sooner. So, so really, I would aim for passing at least one or two exams. That would be great. And you would be you'd be competitive with most of, most of the market. Like a lot of people are applying to entry level actuarial positions that from my experience in helping tons and tons of people is two or three exams generally they have. So if you can do that by the time you're out of college, then you're good in terms of that. But you do have to remember that actuarial exams are not the only thing that employers look for. And lots of people have those exams and they, they tend to think that that's going to get them the job, but that's not the only thing you need. So you need your technical skills and you need your related experience as well. And that's what's going to make you stand out and that's what's going to make you a top candidate. And that's what we talk about in the Accelerator community. And that's just what everyone's uh, kind of aiming towards is being a top candidate. If you're a top candidate for an actuarial position, then you're going to get a job. Um, you just have to keep at it, keep progressing and all that. So do what you can. Um, I know it's extremely hard to pass exams, actuarial exams while you're studying. So do what you can. Um, but I would say if you can get one or two exams done, that would be great. So oh, Zainab joined. Awesome. So looking forward to have, having you guys in the community. Um, okay. Also, I am applying for co-op. Do So co-op is very similar to an internship, but it's you at least like at University of Waterloo, we had co-ops rather than internships. I, I'm not 100% sure what the difference between an internship and a co-op is. I should probably look more into that. But I think it's just the, basically the difference is a co-op is where your school kind of helps you find those positions um, rather than you having to go out and look for them on your own like you would for an internship. Not 100% sure about that though. Anyway, they're basically the same thing. So Ian is applying for co-op positions do I have any do you I have do you have any suggestions on what types of jobs I should get that prepares me for an actuarial job if there is not any actuarial position I can get okay so Ian this question was actually posted very close to the the beginning of the call so I, I did already go through those a little bit and I'm sure you you know that um, but Co-op positions are basically the exact same as what, what I would recommend for full-time positions that I was talking about before. So if you can get anything related to like data analysis, uh, like a data analyst job, anything like that uh, would be awesome for a co-op position. Underwriting, uh, financial analyst, risk analyst, um, anything, anything like that, they'd all be really good co-op positions, just like they'd be good full-time positions. Okay. Um, okay, Hannah asked a really good question. 
they've all been good, but I like this one. So Hannah says, what are some tips for getting an actuarial internship in university? Okay, really good question. Um, so a lot of actuarial internships are really competitive. So like the actuarial career overall is competitive. There tends to be a lot more people looking for positions than there are positions available. So very similar to how you have to be a top candidate for actuarial jobs, you want to try to make yourself a top candidate for actuarial positions. So if you can get some technical skills under your belt, that's going to really help. Um, and, and an exam that will help as well for actuarial internships. You want to make sure that your resume best displays why you make a good position or why you make a good candidate for that position. I see so many resumes where people kind of just list out what they did in past positions and they don't necessarily even show how that's related to the actuarial career. So it's kind of a trap that many people get stuck in. Like, um, it, for example, a lot of people decide to become an actuary if they're math teachers, but instead of putting exactly what skills make a good math teacher on your resume, you have to figure out what skills you have from your math teaching experience and how those relate to actuarial positions. And that's what you should put on your resume instead not what makes you a good teacher necessarily. So whatever, Hannah, whatever experience you already have, you have to kind of do the same thing. Try, and if you join the, the Accelerator community, my resume course goes through all this and, and I can help you as well. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're best displaying any experience that you have in terms of what actuarial employees are looking for. So it, it can be tough to do that, but it's really important and it will give you a much better chance of getting a job because you're not showing what you can do necessarily. You're showing how your past experience relates to an actuarial position and that's what employers will wanna see. They're, they're hiring an, for an actuary, not for a teacher or not for a cashier or something like that. So um, transitioning your experience into actuarial related experience is really going to help. Okay. Um, I'm kind of reading through these questions quickly to see if I've answered them already. I'm going to go for five more minutes. I know I keep saying that. So 930, we're ending. I'm going to answer two more questions and then we'll be done for tonight. So if you want to join the Accelerator community, go do that now. Use coupon code SUCCESS. Um, um, I'm going to put that in the chat one more time. Good night, baby fox. I will see you and talk to you in the community. Okay, so I just put that in the chat. This is your last chance to go use that coupon code. Um, okay. Drew asks, I work full time as a data analyst for an engineering firm. Do you think I should apply for internships? Is it scary to think that I may leave my job for a non guaranteed position? Okay, great, great question. So data analysts already sounds like a great position. I don't, I don't think that you necessarily need to go apply for internships. You can start applying for full-time actuarial jobs and then you won't have any of this uncertainty. That's what I'd recommend for you. I, I definitely wanna make sure that your experience, is, you're, you're displaying your experience in a way that is um, relevant to actuarial positions and stuff. But, but certainly if you have data analyst experience, I think it's, you're in a good position to go start applying for actuarial jobs. Um, one, but obviously you would probably need to have at least one exam passed. So if you don't have that exam passed already, then that will be your next step before you start applying for those actuarial positions. So great question. And yeah, no need for an internship there. I think you can go right into an actuarial position if you have that job already. Okay, last question is from, um, those have already been talked about. Oh, well, what will the last question be? Um, Okay, Kaleidis asks, uh, says, thank you for conducting this Q&A. You're very welcome. 
my question is the following. What are the main things employers look for on your resume when applying for internships? Okay, awesome. So you're going to want to make sure you've put any possible, any experience you have with Excel, you want to put that on your resume for sure. Any experience you have with analyzing data or and, and coming to like valuable conclusions, making decisions and all that kind of stuff, definitely put that on your resume. If you have any presentation experience, you're going to want to put that on your resume. Um, if you have any, like anything you can do, like we've been talking about, to show that your past related experience, your past work experience is in some ways related to the actuarial career, you're going to want to put that on your resume. Um, they're going to look for at least one exam passed, most likely. For internships, sometimes you can get one without any exams passed. I actually managed to do that. Um, but usually they'll want at least one just to show that you're serious about the actuarial career. Um, so you want to put that, Excel, um, and yeah, your related experience. So that the, overall, that's what they're going to really look at. They may look at your GPA as well. Um, different, different companies have different thoughts on GPA. Some of them are more strict about it, others are not. So typically what I've heard is a 3.0 average or GPA or higher is what some companies cut it off at. So a 3.0 uh, GPA. Um, but if you don't have that, don't be overly concerned. Some companies will still give you a position. You just have to make yourself a better candidate in other ways. Um, one kind of cool thing about the actuarial career is that there are many different ways that you can stand out. You get you get to have technical skills, you get exams, you get education, you get experience, all those four things can kind of make, like you can work on other areas to make yourself a better candidate, even if your GPA is lower. So great question. And that is all for tonight. If you want to join into our next Q&A, which is going to be uh, next week, later in the week, I'm not 100% on, on the day, I'm not sure on the day yet, but we are doing one just for Accelerator members. And I will answer every single question during those calls because it's a much smaller group and I can get to all of them within a reasonable amount of time. So I'd love to have you join. Use coupon code SUCCESS to get your first month in the Accelerator community for $1. $1. It's worth it for your career. Okay, uh, that's all for today. I, I will leave the success, success coupon code open for five more minutes, uh, just, just so you can go in and get that finished and everything, um, but then I will be taking it away. So thank you so much for coming. I loved having you guys here, and I hope to see you in the community. I'd love to have you join. Bye.